Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun coming at you again with another quick question. We had a question today regarding uh, clicking on one user form uh, list box and then that will populate a second one. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what I did already in the data sheet of this workbook. We have all these IDs. These IDs are not necessarily unique. Uh, there are multiples of them. So what they want to do is when they click on the first list box, let's say it had value 001245, then it would go through this worksheet and find any of them and all of them that have the 1245 value and populate from another column over here. And uh, we have a master list here of just only the unique items in this table. And we're going to go ahead and give that a name. Let's go ahead and highlight that. And we'll just call it IDS, IDs. That's the name of this range now. So when you click on the name manager, you'll see that IDs show up. A little bit of house cleaning. I should, I could have done this beforehand, but I actually wanted to build the user form in front of you so that you could see that happen. So, and uh, let's see that happened over here in my other screen. This is uh, Alt F11 will bring up the Visual Basic Editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this drop down and click on New User Form. So now we have a new user form. We're going to go ahead and create those two list boxes that we told you about. So we're going to click on the list box tool. Looks like this right here. So we're going to click here and then we're going to click here and hold control and click and drag. That will create a duplicate. And what we can do is we can just make these a little bit larger so that we can be ready to work with it. Now you can give these a unique name if you want to. You can click on the names manager here. If this uh, properties window doesn't show up, you can hit F4 on your keyboard to bring this up. I'm not going to give them a name. I know they're going to be list box one and list box two, and that's fine for this example. So what we're going to do with list box one, I'm going to go ahead and click it. And what I want to do in the properties window, so I want to find something called the row source. And you remember we named an actual range in the worksheet of IDs. Let's go ahead and hit enter after typing IDs into the row source. And so we'll see here that we can now uh, use this in our list box. So I'm actually shrink that. We don't really need it to be that uh, that large here. So here is all of the entries that we need in the list box one. Now, whenever we select on one of these, the list box one dot value is going to be that number. So if I click within there. Uh, the list box one dot value is currently 001246. What we want for list box two here is we want to take some element from this other sheet and populate any and all instances of whenever the value 001246, for example, has been uh, is available in that worksheet. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and figure out what the last row is. And we want to do this dynamically. We know uh, that there's a hundred records, so it's going to be row 101 is the last row, but we want to teach Excel to automatically determine the last row. So when this user form is open, we want to double click on user form one. I'll go back here. So we just double click right here on this user form because we want to do a click event. Whenever list box one has been clicked, we want that to trigger this event. And here's the code we want to do. First of all, we need to find the last row on that worksheet. So what we're going to do is we have the sheet one is what it's actually called in the code name and the name of that sheet. So we can actually just refer to it as sheet one. Um, if we wanted to give it a unique code name that we could refer to later, we could do that here under, let's see, oops, click here on sheet one you can give it the code name is in parentheses here. So if you wanted to give it one of those, you could type whatever that is dot. If you put it here then you have to put uh, this workbook dot sheets or just sheets and then parentheses quote this end quote in parentheses. So you can do either way. I'm just going to refer to whatever's in this code name here as sheet one, which is already a sheet object. So we have IntelliSense. So if I type sheet one and hit dot, we already have this IntelliSense drop down that gives me all the things I need. So what we want to do is to find the last row. And if you've seen any of my videos before, or I even have a special uh, video on how to get the last row, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. But I'm going to say sheet one dot cells. 
and we're gonna say how many uh, rows are there we're gonna get the count rows dot count comma and we want to get them from column one which is the ID and then we're gonna use the dot end method using XL up not X one up but XL up and then we finally we get, want to get the row and essentially all that does is it finds the very last uh, cell in the whole workbook and hits control up until it stops at the next non-adjacent cell which was this one here and but we don't want a 101 we just want the dot row of that which is why we put the dot row at the end to only get the row number so it'll give me the number 101 which will be trapped in this lovely variable called last row so now we have the last row we know that we want to loop from 2 to that number because we row 1 is taken right now so we're going to loop from 2 to 1 100. So we're going to say for x equals 2 to, I'm not going to put 101, I'm going to put last row because that's dynamic. It means it'll change depending on how many records you have in your data set. Then we'll put next x. I'm going to hit up, I'm going to hit tab. So now that we're here in our loop, if first x is going to be 2, then it's going to be 3, then it's going to be 4, and it's going to loop all the way until it gets to the last row. So once we do that, all we need to do is populate our list box whenever we find a match. So what we want to do is, right before this loop occurs, let's get the contents of that list box. So we're going to say the current value that we're going to look for is me dot listbox one dot value now me represents whatever user form you're in so you don't have to memorize the name or type user form one dot listbox one dot value you say me because we're already inside the user form one when we're typing code so the current value is going to be that listbox value so it might be zero zero two four five or whatever and we're going to trap that in this variable that's going to be important in a second because we're going to say if the current row meaning sheet one dot cells using row x because we're looping row x is two then three so we're going to take row x and we're going to take a look at column a because remember that's where the ids are at zero zero one two four five they're in column a if that equals the current value which is whatever is in the list box then we found a match found a match populate list box 2 and now we'll actually do that instead of just commenting on it so we're gonna say me dot list box 2 dot add item add item is how you can add a new uh, record into your list box so we want to use um, whatever it is in column uh, well in a different column we haven't even decided that let's say we wanted to get the city that would be column C or column one, two, three, if you will. You can use either. So we're gonna say sheet one dot cells, same row as whatever we're looking at right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna use a different column. So I'll just put the C or the number three there. And now I'm gonna type end if, so we don't get an error for not having the end if. And we should be good to go. The only thing is it'll stack, meaning um, if we don't clear it out, uh, every time we do this click event it'll start stacking and I'll show you what that means so let's debug just a little bit um, let's hit F8 uh, excuse me after we open the user form so we're gonna click here and I I put a breakpoint right here by clicking on this little gray line that way so we can backtrack the last row is 101 that's good the current value is 001244 also good now we're gonna start our loop so for x equals 2 to last row. So it's x, once I hit F8, is going to first be the number 2, then it'll be 3, all the way until it gets to 101 in this case. So I'm going to hit F8. x is currently 2. So sheet 1 dot cell, let's see, this means row 2 in column A. So A2 is equal to that value. But is that equal to the current value, 001244? No, it's not going to be equal. Oh, but this one is, so x is now equal to 3 in the second instance of the loop, and apparently cell A3 is equal to our current value. So what that is going to do is going to make the add item to the list box. So the last name of Hila is, or Hoyla, I guess, 
is going to, uh, from, from column C and also in row three, is going to be populated or added to our uh, list box. Let's go ahead and cheat a little bit. I'm going to put a breakpoint only at the next time we find a match. So let's hit F5. Let's see, now we're on row 10. Row 10, Saguene is going to be added. So let's go ahead and just run this all the way through now and see how our list box looks. So list box 2 added these results here, and I can click because there's no click event. It's not going to run anything if I click around on here. So we have all these names that match up to the value 001244 which is really cool. Now if I click on another one, here's what's going to happen. Instead of clearing this out fresh and then adding new results, it's going to add them all to the bottom right after the word Cairns. So if I click on 001245, right after Cairns we get Colin and whatever else here. The way we can resolve that, I'm going to hit Alt F11 to go back into here, double click on the click event for list box 1. All we have to do is a one-liner, it's really easy. So clear list box one and you just do the same thing it's me dot list box one dot you guessed it clear and that will actually clear it out so that every time this procedure runs it's going to clear out the oops excuse me i meant list box two dot clear we don't want to clear out list box one on the left so that means once i click on a value here it's going to populate this and now when I click on another one, it clears it and then runs that thing. So that this list, second list box is only populating uh, whenever we need it to. And it's uh, only giving fresh results based on this entry item here. So that is how to do that. And of course, again, if you wanted a different columns value, you could simply change it up. I just chose column C for fun. We also have column B which is the name or you could do column D uh, which is the pin. So if I change it to column D uh, to get the pin number, so what pin numbers are associated with this account or this ID number? Well these ones or these ones. And the same thing for the name would be column B there. So you can download uh, this workbook. The link will be in the video description. And thanks so much for watching and God bless.